Welcome back to Woke Plus. I am Weekend Woke, joined once again by Greg Knight, for night four of the cap. Welcome, Greg. How's it going, man? Good to be back. Good to yeah. be back. Good I'm to finally, have you. Finally settled into this pattern of staying up now this late, so bring on the sphere. Yeah, I thought this was a good warm-up for me, not like musically or anything, but just like getting into the nocturnal mindset for those sphere shows, because I was just doing the math, and I'm like, I'm going to be up to like three or four in the morning every oh, yeah. night. <laughs> it's going to suck. 100%. but i'm happy to be here and i'm happy you're here with me and everyone watching um big picture i always like to get like your big takeaway fresh off we just 15 minutes ago they just wrapped things up what do you think about tonight and how they were playing so the guys are uh, i mean totally settled in comfortable on the cap stage really you know becoming a bit of a second home for the band um i'm i'm also like always partial with any band to multi-night runs just because there's nothing like that last night when they're super comfortable everything's dialed in and it's plug and play so was really happy to see them kind of pick up where they left off um and certainly big picture um doing their best to earn the indie title in indie groove which was genre <laughs> title early on for the band and recently, I saw a, a post by somebody, Live Nation, or one of like the official outlets, like right selling tickets, and they were like, "Yeah, indie groove band." I was like, yep. "Oh man!" <laughs> when Live Nation says it, you have no choice but to. You have no choice. You, know, you have to go. With it. <laughs> I thought the theme of uh, some intricate compositions returned again tonight, and kind of going back off what we were talking about yesterday. Once again, Connor just fucking or uh, Cotter. Sorry, I was looking at the chat. Uh, caught just fucking sounded like he knew everything perfectly. Didn't miss a cue or, or transition. Some totally. big, big transitions and some complicated compositions. So, yeah, pretty impressive yeah. to watch. I mean, as a drummer as well, I was really happy to. Well, as a drummer, I'm wondering if you were happy to see his rig rundown. I actually missed that because I, uh, I'm going to go back, but uh, I we had live tonight, our live show. So I was so pumped up off of that tumble. But you know what? I did a rundown just like uh, creeping on the videos. Mm -hmm. And I bet you I probably got it 95% accurate. I'll go and see. But I, I'm familiar with most of what he has because I'm a big DW fan and a Zildjian fan. So gotcha. Um, yeah, I, I did miss it though because I wanted to do this set break hang and tell everybody about how much I enjoyed that tumble. Well, before you or wait, yeah, before you do watch his his rundown, be sure to post your predictions of what you think uh, you can expect in his kit. Because yeah, I, definitely I, some I surprises. tweeted it out after the Chateau. Uh, okay, got it. Session, yeah, got it, got it. I, I, I was like freeze framing. I was like, oh yeah, I got this one. I got that. But well, I think uh, ch chat can probably let us know how accurate you were as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, cool. Let's go into the first set. Turbulence and the Night Rays. This like is it. pretty cool. Yeah, right? Turbulence. Good way to kick things off. Totally, totally. And so picking up where we left off last night as well, um, this is another Vasudo tune coming out, getting the full band treatment. Um, I really like Turbulence. Um, definitely kind of biased having seen it played by Vasudo, um, a band that um, simply didn't have time to develop into the band that Goose is now. Um, it's really nice to hear it come back in a, in a much more kind of polished presentation. Um, and since its debut, I think last year, um, it's getting even tighter. Um, and I think ultimately has the opportunity to turn into a bit of a monster. Yeah. Yeah, I, it felt like it was or is about to explode, right? Like it has that potential to it. Um, yep. Yeah, I think I was I was feeling it, but through Tur, but uh, Earthlings was just like exactly what I needed at this moment, right? Totally. Uh, the super fun, funky, and coming from like a self admittedly like a very much like a fish. You know, like that's like the alpha band in my life, right? So I sure, think sure. stuff like this just works really, really well for me. Um, Absolutely, and I had such a fun time listening to it. I think it was a really great, great time. 
Yeah, you know, and it was it's another instance I think of of the band stretching their legs early. Um, you know, Earthling easy for them to kind of kick their feet up and let it ride. Um, I do prefer renditions when I'm rapping on stage with them, but <laughs> I'm not there. Uh, I'm glad they can kind of take it for a walk without me. Oh, I got to hear a recording of that. I haven't heard that. <laughs> there's, there's some, there's, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a good one out there. Um, and there's, there's probably plenty of bad ones that haven't hit the internet. Oh, I'm so. sure they're all amazing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send you one of the unreleased ones. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I'll keep it on. I'll keep it, uh, off the interwebs too. If you yeah. Want. I yeah. just want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a pretty ripping, uh, silver rising. I think. Yep. I really, this is one of the, you know, this and Atlas Dogs was when I was like getting really impressed again with Cottage playing and the ability totally. to pick up all these songs. Yep. Uh, I think everyone nailed it. You know, I do too. I, you know, I think my only gripe could have easy, easily played Silver Rising on Eclipse Night. I understand it's not a moon cabin tune, but, you know, there's certainly themes there that would fit. Yeah, I saw a lot if of people you know I mean. thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but totally, you know, excellent presentation. And I, I do keep coming back to this point, but um you know, remember like, you know, the good old pandemic days when everyone had too much time to tweet and folks were talking about the band's catalog not being enough of a catalog, which is a weird criticism criticism for a relatively new band. Right. However, this is one of several tunes that emerged. Um, God, I want to say it was 2021 or 2022 uh, when they did that West Coast run and like debuted a new song every week or something like that. I think this is one of those. Um, chat can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but it's it's another tune that I've really enjoyed watch come into its own over the last couple of years. Uh, yeah, Jay saying 22. Yep. Yeah, and, and they seem to be playing it a lot. And I mean, I, I wasn't super familiar with this. This was in that like dark period for me, but <laughs> yeah, the dark days. But uh, I, I liked it. I, 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 you, so you, what were you saying about this and Atlas Dog and being a potential gripe having them in the same set? Okay, not a gripe for me per se. I do think compos compositionally, um, they're kind of similar tunes. Yeah. Um, they have a similar vibe. I really like both songs. Um, I just think they rem they always personally remind me of one another. Um, and so it set the tone for a vibe uh, of the set that I probably can't really describe, except that two songs sound similar to me. Right. Have, have very similar compositions and, movements i think for and and that's what's kind of awesome about you know what we do in these bands but there's something for everybody i think yeah. this set worked really really well for my personal taste and i could definitely see though that if somebody that just you know likes the other stuff more that not, not working for them as well but i i came into this like i did this poll as like what was your favorite night and i was so high on this first set Yep. Well, actually, the whole show that and the we'll get into the second set. I was surprised to see, you know, at some point there was no votes for night board starting to even out. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, and and, and it was a great, great first set uh, and really well executed. Maybe my my thing about feeling like I'm hearing the similarity is the reprise of certain lyrics that actually came in How It Ends. Um, but I think it was just the, all that I have kind of like lands in both choruses. Right. Um, so that was the first time oh, I had heard. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah, I yeah. And so that, you know, that was the first time I had heard how it ends. I need to give it another listen and really hear the lyrics again to see if there is a bit of a connection. Um, but that could be it too. Yeah. Those, that a couple of songs during this run that they debuted or were at least first times as goose including this one have really nice big epic feels to them and, mm -hmm. and i think cotter's tom work you know underneath it and and honestly rick's playing and singing he it just really works for that i, I don't know if epic's the right word but there's like something more grandiose and like yeah. big about these songs that i think they're it's not you know ballady but it's not like 
typical jam, right? It's like, right, right. like I don't know. Uh, and this was, a, I think this one is, is another one that fits into that category that I think is going to really develop into something nice. Yep. I mean, I'm excited yep. to see, see where it goes. I think that's well said. There is certainly an air of grandiosity to it. That yeah, grandiose. Really... That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. I say that? That's, yeah, I had that in did. my mind. You, know <laughs> okay. you got it for okay. sure. There's an air, of, uh, you know, I'm of tired, man. It's late. <laughs> it plays on the band's strengths as well, too. You know, I think that's really it. Like all of these swells really have them working together. But I, I do have a, a good adjective now for the press release for tomorrow. So thank you. <laughs> Glad I could help, man. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about this tumble because this, this was where the shit really took off. Yep. Um, I, this is now, I think I'm going to say, this is my favorite song. I really, I really liked everything about it. I like all the movements. Yep. I like yep. the whole Samba thing. I like the funky thing. I like the syncopated yep. thing. Uh, impressed the shit that everybody was so locked in and the yep. jam was absolutely fantastic. I wish I had times tonight. I was, I wasn't able to get any time, so I don't know where it came in at, but even if it wasn't a super long one, it was a really well performed jam and cram packed yeah yeah tumble was a party for sure um i okay so i am a huge fan of the og tumble it's high energy um as you said very very distinct and catchy parts also um what a display of what cotter can do um you know there are a lot of parts of this that require precision and a ton of technicality there's a lot of time changes um and this is one where had they not played at this run i wouldn't have been surprised had they played right. a slow tumble i would have been surprised but to really take a bite out of this song um and let it roll the way they did was uh, it's thanks. promising for the right. band's future he just put the uh, times in there. So we had, it's a 20 came in at that's about right. 23 minutes is what I was, uh, you know, and, and it was, a it was a solid 23 minutes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, it did feel ambitious. I'm, I mean, a lot of this music has felt super ambitious totally. to do all this, but I think this one was one of the more ambitious, uh, ones that they went for and it paid off. And, it, and I think the, the other thing I liked about this was the set list, construction was really nice right yep. i think doing going from turbulence and earthlings all the way up to temple i thought was a nice trajectory that worked i i get i don't want to be hypercritical but there were other times in this run where i liked all of the individual moments but when you took a step back and looked at the overall feel of the set yep you know it left me wanting or or there were things where i was like it didn't sit perfectly and that's a very you know, picky critique, but like, I thought this set list construction was really well done and, and thought out. Do you know, do they plan out their set lists or is it organic? I, I haven't heard anyone talk about that. Um, so in terms of, do they plan them out night overnight, like going into the run? Did they, like, have... do they go into the show with a set list written down or yeah, do they have they... a bucket of songs and they're not sure what order they're going to go in? So they go into a show with with set list written down. Um, and to be to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what the process is like now in 2024. Um, in the formative years, it was the band and coach sitting down and really digging in. Um, coach is a really interesting guy when it comes to set list construction. Um, you could also, you know talk till he's blue in the face about Zealous construction. Um, so it used to be band and coach working on stuff together there for set list, really dynamic stuff that came together. Some cool shows in 2019, 2020 um, in recent years, uh, I guess maybe just cause I'm a little bit too active doing other things um, pre-show. Uh, I haven't mm -hmm. seen the, uh, the set list ceremony per se, uh, but generally they go in with it prepared um, and then r almost always run out of time and have to cut something. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Track standard, standard. Track. <laughs> uh, what else? We got anything else about this tumble? It was, I mean, I'm on to something, right? That was pretty fucking fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. That <laughs> was like, a, a I'm like, agree one. with me, everybody. It was great. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I'm honestly, Surprised to not see more fire emojis in the chat. 
<laughs> right? Uh, all right. Let's take a minute and do my uh, housekeeping. We'll keep it really simple. We have the sure. Wookiee Awards coming back. 424. Everybody gets super fucking excited because that is going to be great. Uh, we will have a new Wody. We'll have a new Lifetime Achievement. New podcast winner. There's a lot of Wookiee Awards. If you haven't caught one, it's really fun and silly and we're very excited about it. And then also for the sphere, I guess that's next week. Holy shit. We will be live 50 minutes after Encore every single night. And on Wednesday before it starts, which I guess is next Wednesday, we're bringing back the lot. So we had a goose party this week. We're going to have a fish party next week. And I hope everybody can come and hang out and join us. Uh, let's get in a second set. All right. <laughs> So I'm guessing these are I, I have to make some more admissions because I've like admitted some of my shortcomings are not, you know, uh, my lack of knowledge on some goose things. I really don't know Vampire Weekend. Uh, so I, I'm assuming these are Vampire Weekend songs, right? Yes. And yes. And that was the first time I actually heard Vampire Weekend. But, you know. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a cool move, and I, I thought the jam, I, which I guess was Cape Cod, right? Not Gen X, the, the big jam. Gen X, yeah. Gen X was um, – that was that first one. And Gen X Cops, I think, is Vampire Weekend's new single, which is on their new album called Only God Was Above Us. Thank you, Wikipedia. Um, and this album came out last week. Um, from what I hear, it's really good. Uh, I'm also not necessarily the biggest indie listener. Uh, I am an indie groove listener, but not as much, uh, deep indie stuff. Straight indie. Yeah. Straight indie is a little bit, you know, um, but apparently this album is really good and Pitchfork gave the album a score of 8.6, um, a number that Goose could only dream of in as a band that plays extensive jams. Uh, so, um, Peter said, go listen to it. Go listen to it. Uh, it's it's super cool. Um, one thing I can say about Vampire Weekend is Ezra Koenig, uh, the front man, uh, has a fascination with jam bands in the jam world. Um, he has always had a desire, I guess this is per what I heard on his podcast, um, to be able to stretch out his songs live. Um, and... You know, that's certainly something that you may see Taper's Choice doing, but not necessarily Vampire Weekend. So I think to to see the Vampire Weekend guys come into the world of Goose uh, and dig in and 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 let a jam go for go the distance uh, was super cool. And it's it's a really it's a ballsy move. Not many folks would do it. Um, you know, have we seen a crossover like this since Jay-Z? Uh, never mind. So, um, you know, uh, but there's a good episode. Ezra has a podcast called Time Crisis with um, Steve Hyden, who is an incredible rock writer. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've uh, had him on Book Plus before. He's awesome. Yeah. Steve is the best. And so they, they had, um, gosh, this might have been 2020. Um, there was an episode of, of the Time Crisis podcast. I believe it was called Grammys, Garcia, and Goose. Um, and they, Vampire Weekend talked a lot about the band then, Ezra talked about his fascination, um, which established this mutual admiration society that then developed into the release of 2021 collaboratively with, um, Vampire Weekend and Goose, which certainly went a long way. Um, and now we find the bands together on stage. Um, so super, super cold moments. Yeah. I, uh, I thought some of the highlights for me was, seeing trevor next to i don't know the vampire weekend's bass player but he's a very fun quirky dude yep. uh and he's all just like jamming out and like you see trevor's like giving a little extra nod but not committing yep. uh, i also love seeing ct up there with this tapers choice uh shirt rocking that yeah uh, it feels a little bit awkward and i'm not gonna be like a jeff hater but like you know sitting in the back with the bass what was that a third bass but like not really playing i don't know if it was yeah, a bass was he or playing guitar bass or, i think he was actually playing guitar okay but yeah. yeah he was just kind of like standing there in the corner like yeah, is that <laughs> yeah. people remember yeah. i'm here i mean it really is i'm not gonna say there were too many people on stage there was um, a lot of mass of feet though that there was, was a lot, big though. a big yeah. big ensemble yep. yep but it was fun 
And, and I thought Bowl. the point, the, and you know what I love too? I got to give a shout out to the fans and the, the people at the cap is they, they hit the stop start or the start stop jam and not a fuck, single fucker wooed and everybody yeah. just yeah. locked in. Yeah. It was very cool. We have an entire generation of fans that have been taking their woo X. So we're good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think Gen X cops is cool. Cape Cod. Um, somebody said in the chat that there was a, there's been a running um, Deez Johnny in the chat. So there's a, a been a running ongoing joke since the early time crisis days about an eight minute Cape Cod. So um, who needs an eight minute Cape Cod when you can get a 30 minute Cape Cod. Um, so I thought the guitar interplay between Ezra and Rick was, was really cool. Um, it was also cool to see Rick Mataratanda's um, jam lick review um, with all the teases that he worked in. Um, you know, that was, that was cool. And, you know, it, like it's not easy for anyone to commit to, to, improvising on something for that long and keeping it interesting. And I thought that the jam was super sweet. Yeah. Held the attention and, and was really, uh, they maintained it through. There was not a single point where I felt like it was getting stale or, or dropping down. You know, that's yeah. definitely a hard thing to hold for that long. We, I, I don't know if there's a huge difference, but to me, it feels like 20 is one thing, right? But 30, once you start getting there, that's where it's like really, uh, yep. impressive i loved yep. the whole jessica uh i so i guess there were other teases right is what you're saying yeah. but the jessica thing the the almonds uh thread through there was i loved that that was really sweet totally totally yeah i thought it was cool and and honestly um i'm looking forward to listening to what the vampire weekend guy, uh, guys have to say about it um you know i think perspectives from other super established artists like this who step into this space that we're so used to. Um, it's just always, it's always cool to hear what people have to say. Um, one, one other thing I'll say just on this, uh, cause it just came to mind is I think vampire weekend has been trying to dip their toes into this space for a while. I believe if I recall correctly, Twiddle was actually supposed to open for them for a few shows in Canada and in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, no shit. Maybe in 2020. It was going to be a big thing for Twiddle. Arena shows, West Coast, canceled due to COVID. So, um, man, what a bummer. I think this was this a moment like this was probably a long time coming for the Vampire Weekend guys. Yeah. Well, it's cool. I mean, I don't know much about them again, but right, welcome. Right. I'm I'm welcoming to everybody. You know, like yeah. the more the merrier. Maybe uh, by next year, we'll you know we'll be doing a Vampire Weekend podcast. Yeah, and have the after shows and shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought I really liked too the the choice to do Arrow and and the jam that came and kind of kept things moving. To do where did Arrow come in at twenty five? That's fucking bold, right? Like after what a thirty minute five, whoa. Yeah. And and it, and it worked. This had a little more segments to it, right? Because it got yep. spacey, and th and then Rick with the intricate overlay yep. that morphed into like this EDM, you know, rocker. And like you went from ripping to like spacey and intricate to by the end of it, just like a fucking dance party EDM showcase. And I was like, I was there for every bit of it. Totally, totally. And and you know what? It's it's interesting, like. There's plenty of people who dismiss music that exists in the jam sphere. Um, but when you look at the difference between Cape Cod Jam and the Arrow Jam, in terms of just how tight, how distinct these sections were, um, and really how much having five members on stage and watching them play off of each other as opposed to eight, but and like the chemistry you know, and the did. chemistry, right? Like, yeah. It's really it's 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 a really excellent way to to kind of get a feel for just how long it takes to dial in so many of these pieces, mm -hmm. um, to be able to go off in different directions and land together. Uh, but yeah, I was ready to to if I were in the room, I would have been dancing aggressively to Arrow. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. I didn't know we had ads turned on. I just turned them off. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I agree with you 100, percent man. Um, I think I liked both as a uh, you know as a listener because the I, I almost called it the almonds jam, but because <laughs> yeah. also like I had that big feel right like of the multi instruments it was smart, but 
the Cape Cod Jam felt like like a good old fun like mega group thing which you that you get at like you know festivals or whatever. And, and there's something enjoyable about that, but then to come back and see that super tight uh Aerojam, I think really is a cool uh parallel to it. Um and then what's crazy too, back to our original point about Cotter being like brand new and and still and it's not and I like I don't want to overstate it and like I am a drummer so but like I feel like if you changed bass players or keyboard players there's some of that yeah. but not to the level that a drummer has an effect on your sound and how important and how hard it is to be that tight for a drummer you know what I mean yeah. like it's it's yeah. so super obvious when he misses a cue or anything that he can't really hide anywhere. And right. I really like that it, it was as tight as it was. Yep. Yep. 100%. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little bit uh controversial here. I don't like this born. <laughs> I don't I'm not a big born fan. <laughs> kind of uh I don't know if it's controversial, honestly, but yeah. this was pretty much the first time the whole run where I was like pulled completely out of it and like mm -hmm. maybe that's how i know i'm like becoming like a, like a legit super legit goose fan because i cannot be like really critical but i don't know man i don't know what it was i don't want to shit on it if people like it like everybody likes their thing but it really kind of pulled me out of the set and was giving me like fourth quarter problems i don't know i hear you i hear you um and i think okay i also think in a set like this that's kind of natural right like you have close to 40 minutes of music we didn't necessarily anticipate from a different catalog. Um, and then a super high energy arrow. Um, when you know that second set is waning and it's the end of the run, there's sometimes that's where expectations can creep in. Right. Um, no doubt, for sure, I wouldn't deny that. You know, and so I think that's thing one. Um, thing two, Born is a very different direction for Goose. Um, but the more that I think about it, this was a very indie second set. Yeah. So, you know, I think Born as a piece of music stands on its own. It's a cool evolution. It was a really marked change for the band. Um, I am not necessarily a close to the end of second set Born kind of guy. Yeah, I think that's more my issue is the placement yeah. of in the construction. I think if this were in the first set or top half of the second set, it would work better. I, yeah. I think there was a lot of men momentum built up, you know, with the yeah. arrow that I would honestly the hunger site would have worked perfectly. Like if and I hate I hate doing revisionist, you know, Kev does that all the time on like the fish after show. He's like, Oh, they should have cut this and just done that. But like I hate yeah. doing that. But hypothetically, if we had just skipped and done the hunger site out, I think it would have been a perfect set. Yeah. I would have been yeah. up here just gushing. And it's not that I hate the song Born. I just didn't like how it fit in this set. And, and it took me out of it. That's all. Yeah, understandable. And, you know, I um, I think Came to Play in the chat mentioned um, Born doesn't work in every slot. You have to slot it right. But they wanted to do the drip titch. So I do think... That's a, a, a certainly a thing too. Born hunger side drip field, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's become that real representative of what you know what drip field is, uh, the change in sound. Um, so I guess that totally that does make sense. Um, I thought the hunger site was really good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I did too. And I thought the drip field was fantastic. I thought both of yeah. them were, were really stellar. I, yeah, and you know what? Maybe that context, I didn't know that or think about that, but the Born felt a little forced, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. like they were mm -hmm. trying to do something inorganic with it. Right. Um, right. And I mean, it was subtle. Like, I'm not I'm not saying it ruined the show. I still, I personally still think I enjoyed tonight probably the most out of the whole set, either yeah. tonight or, not, or last night. But uh, I don't know. That was the one low point for me in the set. But I, sure. I think by Hunger Sight, they brought it, brought it back. Yep. I was really digging it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hunger, I mean, Hunger Sight, it's like, I, I do wonder though, also, I think after that arrow, it's that arrow is tough to follow. 
Yeah, uh, the only it really that, is. That really could have worked for me following that era would have been that tumble. Um, but, you know, <laughs> hunger. Right, but I tumble. wanted that tumble to end the first set, though, because I was, you should have seen me, man, on, yeah. on live. I was hyped. I was yeah. so hyped coming out of the tumble. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I actually needed that, like, Trevor meditation video visualizer to bring me back to earth post tumble. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, hunger site, you know, it has that like arena rock feel good kind of. I agree with this thing going and then drip field exciting conclusion. Yeah. I think um, I, I didn't get back into it. So like, as I was saying, born took me out, even mm -hmm. though I appreciated and, and I dug hunger site, I didn't really get back into it mentally. And maybe part of it's because I'm tired. It's the end of a four night run. They're playing late, but it wasn't until drip field. Like towards the end, the back half of drip field was when they got me back to the same like hype level that I was at with Arrow. And I don't think that's what you want, right? Like right. I don't want right. you to have. I don't think they want you to have 20 minutes where you're kind of like, you know. And and I guess it's hard too with couch tour. That's I mean that's not specific to tonight, but like you know it's hard to maintain your focus through a TV screen. Yes. You know, a thousand percent. A thousand percent. Yeah, I um, I, I tend to chomp when I'm in front of a TV screen. So, uh, oh, I don't. I, oh, sorry, I do not listen. Read that YouTube chat after night one. I learned that lesson very quick. Oh, that is a no toxic way. cesspool of a place. Oh, yeah, shit. it's like fantasy tour live. Yeah. Um, it is really yeah. That's that's the thing, Matthew, bro. Don't read the chat. Um, so slow, ready, okay. Um. I think if anyone who's listening knows me, you know that I um, die by these words. I am team so ready all day. Um, but this was an awesome slow ready. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Um, I personally. Is that painful to concede as a slow ready guy? To give it's, it's, slow ready know, the props? I, as, I, as I have grown and stepped into fatherhood, I can admit not when I'm wrong, <laughs> but when others are right. Um, so slow ready, it, it, it was it was great, super high energy. Um, you don't always see Peter dance that hard. Um, <laughs> what do you think about slow ready as a as a closer for a four night run? I don't want to do the revision. Uh, I'm going to. I think it worked because I felt pretty good, but I don't think it was the best choice. On I think that a bigger like trash can ending after a monster jam in this encore would have really punctuated the run. I I mean, don't get me wrong. I think this run was fantastic. You know, I was joking before about being a hundred percent now and mm -hmm. all this other shit, but I, I do, now that you bring that up, I think that the, it was kind of a whimper, right? Not like a whimper, mm. but like, you know, I, I loved I loved the end of it. I was fucking digging it and dancing. And I like, I'm not trying to be critical, but yeah, I don't know if it was the perfect choice to do right. it as right. the last encore, right? Right. Maybe like an earlier encore and then done something. But what, so what's like your favorite encore that they have? Or what's the big, what's like, what would be a good big conclusion? So, okay, that's actually, it's an interesting question because I don't know that favorite encore necessarily has developed entirely for them in my mind. Um, like just, I think in terms of the amount of shows I've seen over the years, so many of them, either the band was an opener or um, they ran out of time. And right, and had to their set. You know, I mean, so it's like, I, I, you know, I'm not a person who's like every show needs a monster Arcadia encore or something like that. Um, but if we're if we're doing this revision kind of thing, yeah, why not? It's um, hypothetical, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, huh? I need to think more about this. Something is going to come to mind. But you know, for example, like. I also probably would have a gripe if it was hot tea. So, yeah. Although that was what was that two nights ago? Three nights, two nights ago? ago. Yeah, that was fucking fun too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think probably because it's new, this wouldn't be you know the choice of most hardcore fans. But thinking about tonight, I think the how it ends could have been a cool, uh, yeah. big ending. 
You know, I think yeah. it needs to get its legs a little bit more and develop a little bit more. But that had a nice big feel to it. Uh, totally. And it was like the irony of like how it ends, like how the run ends with how it ends, right. I think is a cool thing. I don't know. Definitely. Hot seat would have been cool. I mean, they obviously or they played that played that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But the, listen, and, it was fun, though. Right. Like, I'm was, not I, I was wasn't fun. like, oh, I can't believe they did this. It sucks. I was just. Right. And honestly, I didn't even think about it until you brought it up. But now that you brought it up, I'm like, yeah, damn, Greg. Right. So, you know, <laughs> had I been there, I would have had no complaints at all and said it was perfect. Um, but you know, as you it, should. <laughs> yeah, it's it's um it'll be interesting though, because as we were talking about yesterday, you know, this summer really feels like this is the the big tour, right? Like bigger rooms, um a lot bigger spaces. So it'll be interesting to see how these set lists really develop now that they're in some of these premier places. Yeah, that transition out of theater. I mean, I know they've already done arenas and, and some big sheds, but like more consistently and where it gets into your psyche exactly. and you have enough to really react. Right. Because the other one, it's <laughs> not that it was like, I don't want to say it was a surprise, but it, from what I'm gathering, it feels like it was kind of a big sudden thing. Right. Like where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, shit. And, and you're still your mindset hasn't adjusted. Right. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what that that change would look like. Totally. You know? Totally. So you're coming on tour. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. I'm going. Let's do this. I'll just get the baby Bjorn thing and have that's the, it. And just have her dancing with me. Yeah, that's right. Both of us, Bjorn's and headphones, you know? All right. All right. We'll Actually, bring these eight months old out. They're ready. They'll be future lot legends. Dude, I not to get on like dad and baby talk, but uh my the the youngest, whenever there's quiet, she's fucking wide awake and can't settle down. Yep. I learned this from a very young age with her. I put on like like James Bond or something like not to watch. It's like on the and like there's explosions and gunshots and shit right. out instantly. Totally, like, uh, totally fast asleep. So I bet she would love it. She'd yeah. sleep right through, and we could just dance and have a great time. I'm, I'm. It's very similar here. And our white, our white noise is generally something strange. It's not like rain, um, right. but you know, it's 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 something relatively exciting or Jeopardy. Um, but you know, whatever works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming and hanging out with me one more time. Uh, For sure. This was a great run, and I appreciate all you guys watching. If you're watching this afterwards, let us know in the comments what you thought about tonight's uh, show and, uh, and about the run overall. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. We have tons of great content coming up this summer, and it really means a lot to us. Thank yeah. you, Greg. Appreciate it. Always great to be back. <laughs> I love having you on. You got a lot of love online today. Everybody's like, Greg's amazing. I was like, I know this. And I'm glad they know it too. Anytime. Let's do this more. Will do. Thanks, man.